Hey Slasher fans, thanks for joining us for our commentary for Scream 4. So this is the last installment in this Slasher franchise, and we've been with you guys for the first three movies, so we're closing it out tonight, or morning, or whenever you guys are listening to this. Um, yeah, so we're going to be taking on Scream 4, and yeah. So when you guys are ready, uh, press play, unless you guys are just kind of watching this on your own, then... Just listen to the commentary. So press play now. So yeah, another another exciting Scream installment. Um, Wes and Kevin Williamson, Williamson came together again. And um, I guess this one didn't live up to all the hopes and expectations that we Scream fans uh, were maybe, I guess, dreaming for. But um, Box so office-wise, definitely. Um, I still remember boxoffice.com about a month. If, if you go to their website, about a month before a movie comes out, they do box office predictions. They had this movie pegged at doing $52 million opening weekend for a total gross of $115 million. It ended up doing $18 million opening weekend for a total gross of $38 million. So its total gross was roughly $15 million less than what they were predicting, predicting for opening weekend. Uh, we're going to talk about why we think this movie wasn't a box office success throughout this commentary. And one thing that's kind of interesting is this opening. It's a movie within a movie within a movie. Steve, how do you feel about this opening? I enjoyed it, actually. I, re I really did at first. So, you know, it always I didn't know it was going to be the movie within a movie within a movie kind of thing. And so it took me by surprise. But I, I enjoyed it. Um, to me, it seemed kind of fun and clever and just kind of... I guess worked its way into the film, so I, I I was a fan. Did you ever get any pictures of Channing Tatum sent to you on your phone, or were I you haven't. the one who sent them? Uh, you blurred out the face. Neither yet. So, um, did you ever have a phone like her, the slider? I think those were popular. What, like uh, two thousand six, two thousand seven, maybe? The sidekick, but and no, no, I didn't. You didn't have a sidekick. Mm -mm. I know a lot of people did though. They loved them. I had I had an LG something that was the, the Eris it was called with the purple case. No, that's the Droid Eris, um, and I didn't have a purple case, but that was the worst phone I've ever had in my life. <laughs> um, so these two girls right here, uh, these are actually my favorite of the three openings. I actually wish that this had been the real opening. I think that it kind of plays fun with the material. They're they're having you know they're having a good time uh, immediately like a minute into the movie they are ready to make fun of the Saw franchise. You already know that this is going to kind of be a new beginning or at least a new beginning that they hoped for the Sasha franchise. So uh, I guess I'll, this movie was kind of ten years in the making. Um, I was actually when they announced this I was in college I believe they announced it in two thousand nine. They had a release date already in 2009. It was They already knew right away it was going to be April 15, 2011. And I actually did, um, for a media speech class, I did a big, like, we had to do, like, a commencement speech. And mine was going to be that I was working for for Dimension, and I was the one who was announcing that there was going to be a screen for, and we got all of the the major cast lined up and we got the director back and we got the writer back and I was so excited and I thought other people were excited too but based on the box office returns I think that for whatever reason this movie kind of brought in the hardcore fans or at least the hardcore fans that were still kind of st stuck with the series but it failed to kind of bring in um, a new teen audience. So is there one thing you can maybe pinpoint as to a reason why the teens didn't come out, was it something as fu as simple as, oh, they've done screams in the past. I don't want to see another one. I want to see what's new and now, and that is paranormal activity. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I honestly think that having Scream Four as a title probably hurt this movie more than anything. Because it acknowledges it that it's the fourth part of a slasher franchise, a fourth part of a slasher franchise that started 15 years before this one. I I wouldn't be surprised if they had called this Scream Return to Woodsboro. Just something like that. But just the fact that there's a number in the title and it's a number four 
when the third one had been 11 years before this, it immediately felt old to the audience. So I, I honestly think that as simple as, as a, a title change would have helped at least a little bit. But I, I'm kind of sad to admit that um, if this movie had been, if the original screen had been remade, instead of having a fourth installment, uh, we probably would have saw double the box office. Hmm. It, it, it's too bad, too. I mean, because we've, we've all, you know, Kevin and myself has grown to, to love screen, obviously. And um, it's, it's kind of a downer when something doesn't kind of pan out and you hope it's going to be huge and everybody's going to be excited and you're kind of the only one who is. And um, yeah, it's too bad. So here's the second movie within a movie. And one thing that I've never understood, and they even acknowledge it in the movie, but I still don't think it completely makes sense, is that if you're going to be watching, okay, so they're watching Stab 6. And anyone who's watching Stab 6 will have seen Stab 5. And if this was a scene in Stab 5, they would have known it instantly. Oh no, it's step six to step seven. I was I was one off, but um, it doesn't make sense at all. Did you know going in that it was going to be kind of the movie within the movie? Yeah, that was one of the few things that they Maybe. kind of hinted at. Well, and plus they had said, well, they didn't say when it was going to be the movie within a movie, but as soon as they announced that um, five people were going to die in the, the, the opening, that I knew that that couldn't have been all one scene, and this had to have been where the movie was. Um, it was going to be the movie within a movie. So an alternate scene actually has these two roles reversed, where this is Jenny and Marnie, and... Jenny's actually the one who kill, gets killed first, and then it's um, Marnie who's the last one to get killed. And um, you guys might remember from the TV stats, it's Marnie played by um, Britt Robertson where she's on the floor and she looks at Ghostface, Ghostface and she's like, you're not real. And that was in almost all of the TV spots. So were numerous scenes that we'll be talking about through this commentary that none of it made the final film. And whether or not the this, I think that they felt that this whole opening had to have been longer. I mean, the original scene, it was, it was none of this. It was pretty much she goes to the kitchen, gets something from the fridge, and we see the, the reflection of Ghostface in the background. And Ghostface just walks up to her and stabs her and then attacks her. And that's literally the whole opening scene. But I think that they did feel like this is a screen movie. We need the phone call. But it was much more... The, the original the original opening, which I do like a little bit better, I just felt it was much more blunt. It was to the point, and it was actually a little bit scarier. And I don't think it helps either that um, the the other girl, not Brittany Robertson, um, Amy Degard, I think is her name. Um, this girl right here. Um, She's definitely the lesser actress of the two. Um, I, I like her better. Than the other girl? Why? Yes. <laughs> what do you mean why? I don't understand how it's all There's two big reasons why. <laughs> and you know that's our acting talent or wine <laughs> delivery. I don't like how everything out of her mouth is like very sing songy. It's you know, you really should direct horror films. Um, this was kind of a a bad month for this actress's career. Um, I thought that she was going to really big, be big. She had kind of the the big opening kill for Scream 4. And she was also the lead in the Disney movie called Prom. They both came out the same month and they both bombed at the box office. So poor Amy. So a lot of this dialogue, the phone dialogue, was uh, written by Wes because it was kind of a last minute replacement. You felt the same way. You like the blonde with the big tits, and you want to have some fun with her before she dies. <laughs> Who wouldn't? I guess Wes felt the same way. 
Do you know much about the um, script process in this one? I know, I think it was three that there were some uh, complications a little bit. There were a lot more with four. Uh, pretty much depending on who you want to believe, um, who you talk to, uh, about halfway through or maybe a little bit more than halfway through, Kevin Williamson kind of just walked off set and said, I'm done. You know, he had written a lot of script rewrites. Uh, I've actually read his original script. Some of the stuff I really like, some of it is very needlessly vulgar. It doesn't work at all. Uh, I don't... Uh, there's, yeah, I, I think that just as not as much good stuff works in this final version as did in his original script. It's, it's different stuff here and there, but, uh, yeah. So, I mean, here we get kind of the homage to Tatum in the, Tatum in the original screen. Were people in the theaters, um, fans, could you tell by their reactions? of the, the movie within the movie. I remember when I was watching in the theater and I thought I saw it just a couple days after it opened and people people enjoyed it. They were kind of laughing and kind of... Well, when they, I said opening night, really people clapped at each one of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, people are really involved in it. I don't like the, the ghost face head in the background yeah, i should have just been screen four. Screen four, <laughs> how text. do you think that you should really say it screen four no the four is the a what are you gonna say scra four mm. is that what you say is that what <laughs> no? you said when you went to the ticket booth so you had one ticket for scra well, they were talking, four mm. they were talking about that screen five was gonna be um like the the five was gonna be the ass, so it was gonna be like five cream. Hmm. <laughs> I'll take one for five cream. <laughs> so we kind of talked about Nev Campbell. Uh she's looking great in this. A grown up Sydney here. Yeah, she looks fantastic. It looks like it was like maybe a year after Scream Three, let alone eleven years hmm. later. And we got um, Allison Brie playing her publicist, uh, Rebecca. You like Rebecca in this? Yeah, kind of she, the, she, the overly ambitious. <laughs> yeah, I mean she she adds a little pep to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. No, I completely agree. So, kind of the backstory with this, I'm sure you guys all probably know this, was that this movie was kind of being made in the process of them getting divorced. There's rumors that. Um, David was possibly with one or maybe more of the college-aged extras that were in kind of the big barn scene that's going to be coming up. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it happened, we don't know. Probably. This is all speculation. More than likely. If you guys want to watch a really good slash uncomfortable video, uh, go onto YouTube, uh, uh, type in Howard Stern, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, uh, there's pretty, it's pretty much like a marriage counseling of those two on the show and how we're talking to them. It's very, very, very uncomfortable. But we do find out that um, out of all of the guys that Courtney's been with, that uh, David's number two for penis size. <laughs> Just one guy ahead of him. That's pretty good. So we got Emma Roberts playing her cousin Jill, and we got Hayden Panettiere playing uh, Kirby. Uh, is there one that you like a little bit better than the other one? Uh, Kirby, Kirby, hands down. I kind of fell in love with her in this in this film. Kind of like the girls with the boyish haircuts. <laughs> no, just the low cut tops. What? Hey, what about Olivia? Yeah, she's <laughs> drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> Zach said that you would like her because you you like girls that are are fake all around, fake tan, <laughs> and fake tits. <laughs> so you agree, Zachary Allen, on that? Oh, she's real. She's all natural, all natural. Some nice, she, luscious lips. My big problem with her, I don't really have any problems with her as an actress. I mean, I think she's fine. I just, I never believed that this girl would be friends with these two girls. <laughs> she almost feels like she'd be in like kind of like some kind of CW show. She just does it. Maybe she an OC spinoff? 
Yeah, she feels very soap opera-ish, whereas these two girls look a little bit more down to earth. Plus, I mean, she's kind of, she's pretty much the same age as these two, but she does look quite a bit older. Mm -hmm. So arguably the person whose career was most helped by this, I would say it was probably Emma Roberts. After this, she ended up getting a fairly decent sized role in the box office hit Where the Millers. And she also had uh, a pretty a pretty big role in this last season of American Horror Story. Yeah, I've, I've seen her on a few commercials too. I know I think she does the, the face wash. Maybe maybe. Yeah, and then, yeah she, she's done she's getting her a little bit more exposure, which is good for her. So here we got um uh, old Dewey, old, old washed Dewey up, with, wrinkled. How do you like Deputy Judy? <laughs> I like Deputy Judy. Uh so this movie was famous for having many, many, many recasts. Uh, this was one of them. Uh, Marley Shelton was originally played by Lake Bell. Uh, in the original cast, uh, Ashley Green from the Twilight series was going to play Emma Roberts' role. And uh, Lauren Graham, you guys might know, remember her as the, the mother from Gilmore Girls. She was originally supposed to play Emma Roberts' mom. So three fairly decent-sized roles were all recast last minute. And the rumor is, is that... The original actresses were not quite happy with the script changes. Uh, Lauren Graham in particular, they pretty much took what was a decent sized role for the mom and pretty much, I think in the final cut, she might have five or six lines, if that. Mm. So here they're going to the crime scene. We see that in the trailer, written in blood on the wall, is what's your favorite scary movie? That was kind of all over. She was hung from the ceiling, the one girl was. Cut from the final film. Nancy O'Dell, once she's again, back she's again. back. She's just, just milking this. It's not even corny locks. <laughs> well, she just got out of bed, it looks like. But um, you can tell she's aging. But she's aging all right. She looks good. Uh, she she doesn't look very good here, I don't think. With her hair kind of pulled back and those, like, glasses. <laughs> Speaking of... Um, Zachary Allen, he said that when he first saw this scene, as soon as he saw his beloved Gail Weathers with hipster glasses, mm -hmm. his heart broke a little bit. Zach has the same glasses. I like that everything's on the screen and she's still typing. Hmm. <laughs> I noticed that from the first time I saw this. So we get the scream score, instantly recognizable. Mm -hmm. So what character do you think you'd be in this one? Hmm. Charlie, right? Come back I, to you on that one. I think I'd probably be Robbie. You probably wouldn't. That's me. <laughs> you don't think that's me? No. You, you wouldn't talk to these girls. You'd be Charlie. <laughs> Rory Culkin. I'll be Charlie. Why was that film geek? <laughs> Yeah, that is you. <laughs> no, nah, she wants me. Did you grow your hair like <laughs> that? I could. So we missed the principal Henry was that so he died and they had a they had the um the statue for that. Too in jokey, I think. I think that it really would have taken away. <laughs> I don't Maybe I'd be Trevor. No, you would not be Trevor. Trevor's pretty cool. I know, that's why you couldn't be him. Yeah, I always think it's so crazy to think, you know, like, I mean, we've done a couple shoots at a school, um, and we've had fairly success with extras, especially on uh, Don't Go to the Reunion, but I mean, all these extras would just be just be crazy to have on set. I mean, you got to have mm -hmm. so much other, other help besides... Um, well, just, they were... They were looking for tons of actor, extras. Actually, me and my friend Josh were actually going to drive there to possibly be an extra right. because this is filmed in Ann Arbor, Michigan. 
which is, I mean, we're, we live in Wisconsin, which isn't, I mean, it's a decent drive, but it's something that's definitely feasible. So here, so I what guess. What happened? So we just, it just didn't end up happening. <laughs> so here we kind of get an idea of what I was talking about when we were doing our commentary for Scream 3, is especially all of this stuff outside. I just, I don't like this kind of cinematography. Everything looks a little hazy, a little out of focus. It looks very soft. Uh, this movie, I don't know what kind of look they were going for, but it looks very it looks very digital and it looks very soap opera-ish. And out of the four, easily, this movie has my least least favorite cinematography, hands down. Yeah, the 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 outside just looks so blown out. I don't know what they were. It looks and it makes them look all soft. Before. Like it makes them look like they have like a halo around them. All the stuff inside is fine, but mm-hmm. Deputy Judy's pretty hot. <laughs> oh, she ain't bad. She ain't bad. Dewey's aging pretty well. <laughs> Poor Dewey. Poor David Arquette. We could have been extras in the book scene. Yeah, I know. That would have been cool. So I remember this trunk scene was definitely actually one of the first photos that they released was the photo of all of them standing around the trunk looking inside. I believe that was the first still. Hmm. This still right here. That's a um, cool still. But I think they actually cheated it. Like I think there's actually like people that are, are standing around there that aren't actually in the scene. I I could be wrong. It's been a while since mm-hmm. I've seen it, but yeah, it actually reminds. Reminds me of a, a picture we have from when we were filming Teddy. Oh, yeah, definitely. We have a couple of the cast and crew kind of staring into a, into the uh, the hood of the, the truck, actually. And, uh, a very similar picture. So now we got everyone with their cell phone in hmm. class. Um, this movie really made me feel old more than anything, especially the... Um, Emma Roberts was talking about when Scream came out that she was like terrified hmm. and she was like six or something. Hmm. Like it just made me feel so old that like that we're like we're closer to the uh Nev Campbell age than we are hmm. until the Emma Roberts age. Is that why you didn't go to the high school to be an extra? I could have been on <laughs> those uh, Courtney's still looking good, though. She's got a good body. Oh, yeah, definitely. Rocking the, she definitely the dress. looks better here than I think she did. Do you think she looks better in this one or Scream 3? Oh, that hair in Scream 3. Oh. There is something, nothing against Courtney, um, but there is something with her face that it looks like maybe Wrinkles? she's... Wrinkles? No, I think maybe she's had some fillers. Her lips look a little, her cheeks and her lips look a little. Yeah, she's got like those very high cheekbones. I don't remember where I was looking for, but. Nev, just a natural beauty. Yeah, I feel like she's always looked like that. Mm -hmm. So you like lemon lemon squares? (laughs) I could go over some lemon squares right now. When I was a kid, like the um I would eat like the the lemon pie filling right out of the can. <laughs> it can't be good for you. I used to do the same thing for um German chocolate, the uh, um frosting. I'm sure any frosting. You were just digging. No, in. not like the plain frosting. Just stick like two fingers in, just eat that right no. up, get your jar of creamy peanut butter. Same thing. I would sometimes I would put it in a bowl like ice cream and then pour like M and M's in there. Peanut butter? <laughs> <laughs> no, they'd be like extra chocolatey. It'd be like plain M and M's with like chocolate frosting, which like double chocolate. No, not not a big fan. Don't don't really go for the chocolate donuts or the chocolate cake. I'll, I'll do the brownies. I'll do those. No ice problem. cream. No. 
Vanilla ice cream. Strawberry like ice, ice cream. cream. Real strawberry ice cream. Favorite donuts? White frosting with sprinkles. That's all I eat. I like the raspberry filled Bismarck with the, <laughs> the white frosting. What is that? You know, where's raspberry in the middle of the donut? It's got the white frosting. Who in calls it? it a Bismarck? They're called Bismarcks. <laughs> If you go to Dunkin' Donuts, it'll say Bismarck. raspberry filled. It's not gonna it'll say, say Bismarck. B it'll say Bismarck. Have you ever been to a real bakery? <laughs> you ever been to Manderfields? <laughs> so yeah, I remember this scene was one of the first ones that they released. I guess I should have known that this movie wasn't gonna be the biggest success when Nev Campbell was on um Jimmy Kimmel, I think it was. I remember that. I watched that. They didn't even show a clip. Like that that's when you know that they're like, Well, we want to have you for the guest, but we really don't care about what you're doing. Hmm. Because she was supposed to have so much time, but then like they ran over because Vin Diesel was right before her for Fast Five. And his movie wasn't even coming out for another three weeks. Hmm. And he, they took him through two commercial breaks. And then the start of the next one, and then she got half of the between commercial breaks. <laughs> Poor Mav. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that, though. I was watching that. Yeah, I think he asked her, like, two questions. Like, no, yeah. Scream 4 opens tomorrow. I wanted more stuff with Rebecca and Gail. I thought that they would have made a good match. <laughs> kind of, uh, that this is very kind of a Gail... Gail for 2011. Mm -hmm. I, I wish that they would have really done more with her. So we have a, obviously we have a few returning characters from the uh, the previous three. Kevin, if there's somebody that could have returned, um, living or dead, whether they lived through their their previous film, who would it be for you? Parker Posey. Parker, you love. Parker. She was hilarious. That's a good pick. I wonder, I just wonder what her character <laughs> would have been like, you know, that would have been 10 years later, like, mm -hmm. if she was still, if she would have been in, like, Stab 6 or whatever, <laughs> and they could have showed clips from that, or Stab 7. Um, I think that it would have been fun. It would have been interesting to see, like, her kind of age along with Courtney Cox. Mm -hmm. Who would you pick? Well, that's actually a really good pick, because I was kind of going back and forth on a few people, but she would be fun just to see where her acting career would have been at at this point in her in her life. That, that'd that be fun. I could just imagine her some kind of washed up, nobody who's still trying to act like she's she's a big shot in the in the Hollywood. So here's her mom. With her, with her low-cut shirt and Kirby. And the mom's hot? I could not see. <laughs> <laughs> Like, can't you see Lauren Graham no. more as her mom than her? <laughs> well, I don't think Lauren Graham could pull off that old. Whoa. Lauren Graham's good looking. She played What's-Her-Face's mom, a younger <laughs> girl who's even older than... I don't like how Naomi Campbell looks in this scene. Um, the, I don't know what's going on with her bangs, but yeah. I always thought this scene kind of felt a little uncomfortable. It does feel like there's a little bit of sexual tension between the two of them. Maybe that's why the divorce happened. It was all Nev the whole time. No, I think that Nev was... Scarlet, Vixen. I think that Nev was... God, um... Homewrecker? No, I think she was married at this time. I think she's on her second second marriage, but I think that she was married at this time. I know at one time, I think it was in between Scream 3 and Scream 4, but I could be wrong, um, she was dating John Cusack. Hmm. I think she's living in the UK now. Interesting. I know for the commentary, she, she actually calls in Skype hmm. and does part of the commentary. It's her and Hayden and Emma and Wes. A good, good group. So have you ever walked in your bedroom and there's like a guy in there waiting for you? There's, no, there's never been a strange man just that scared you. No. So do you feel they were kind of going for the whole Billy? 
they were, really but feel. it doesn't work. Too many of his scenes were cut, and we don't give a. He just feels like a red herring, and yeah, way too many of his scenes were cut. If you check out the DVD and the Blu-ray, I think there's there's literally I think like fifteen scenes that were cut from the final film, oh. and a lot of them are his to establish his character, but. In the end, I don't think he's the greatest actor, so I don't really think it matters. Mm -hmm. So would you go for Never or Emma? Um, I think I gotta go for Nev. Over Emma? <laughs> but not Why are you over, afraid that Emma's not, gonna not shoot over the you? blondes? That yeah. you're afraid that she's just too scary. <laughs> I think when Dennis says once a crazy, always a crazy. <laughs> I hear you, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I mean this was kind of her a little bit of her breakout role um as an actress i think you know before this she did stuff like hotel for dogs and nancy drew it was a lot of very disney nickelodeon type stuff and this kind of at least showed her range i know that there are some people that really criticize her performance in this especially in the final act they say that she is way too over the top way too crazy i think it completely works I remember watching this scene in the theater. This stupid lady, literally probably two seats down, just kept laughing and laughing and laughing. I'm like, I'm trying to listen to the movie. Why and are she they would laughing? Not shut up. She thought this was so funny. What did they end up play together in high school? The, the, everything the deputy was saying, just how she was hiding in the in the shadows. She just <laughs> laughed. I'll never forget that. It ruined. I bet she really laughed at the end when she's got like the bulletproof vest and she's like, "Wear the vest, save the chest." <laughs> She's laughing a lot at that. She might have been. I don't know. Did you say she was laughing a lot at the circle jerk? <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at that. I think I was the only person in the theater that laughed at that. And I was, too. Did you laugh? You're always laughing at circle jerks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, now we're on to Kevin's two favorite actors in the whole film here. Well, Adam Brody's just really wasted. And Anthony Anderson, he doesn't belong in this movie. I can't take him... They could have cut these two completely out of the film if we're talking about what should have uh, ended up on the cutting room floor. All the scenes with them. It's just dumb. Is that your ringtone? No. No. My ringtone's the Parks and Rec theme. <laughs> See, I don't get how these kind of teens are acting with Sydney. I believe in today's culture that they would be obsessed with her. I mean, they had movies based around her. She's related to one of your friends. Like, they're all kind of, like, creeped out by her. But, like, I feel like there would have been much more of that. You know, she's a celebrity. Like, I want to get her autograph. Like, and I don't know. I think that that's... Well, do you think she was that big of a celebrity? I mean, they made an entire franchise based on her. I know, but I think they'd be more... It, if in she this was small... in the movies, then okay, it'd be bigger. Okay, here, here's the thing, though. Like, these kids live in Woodsboro. She's from Woodsboro. She would be a huge celebrity for them. Yeah. I mean, think of huge celebrities from your town. Mike Goltz? <laughs> There you go. Well, we know we know somebody, or I know somebody whose parents own a bakery, and he's a huge <laughs> celebrity in town. No, I think that they would be all over her. I really do. I mean, wouldn't you be curious? I mean, all of these murders happen in this town that you grew up in. This girl who was there for it, lived through three of the massacres, mm -hmm. is back with her book. I'd be creeped out just like they are. No, I would I would be fascinated. I'd be I'd want to do an interview with her in a second. I'd well I'd probably die because I'd probably be Rebecca. Yeah.
One thing that I don't think quite, like, so we've gotten to the point with Scream 4 of the, you know, how many people even answer their phones nowadays? <laughs> like, everyone yeah, in I these, you. yeah, you never answer your phone. It's all about text. Text messages, just like Zach Stone says. <laughs> Teenage demographic, and that's what teenagers do. True. I always enjoyed this kind of this scene. This is a between brutal, the two rooms. brutal, brutal kill. This is actually our friend Cody. Is this is his favorite kill in the entire franchise? Did you just stand there at the window and That's watch? The same thing I was just thinking. I'm like, they're just standing there. I got two phones I could call. You'd probably hide underneath your bed. I got the cops right down below. Well, it makes sense at least for why one of them is standing there. Because one of them is the killer. Yeah, this seems pretty this seems very brutal. Mm -hmm. So one thing that they changed for this movie. Um I actually don't mind it um, because I think that uh, I think they actually do a really good job. I normally don't like CGI and slashers, but what works with this one is that I don't know if you knew this, but uh, all, all of the 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 cuts every, every time somebody stabbed with a knife, that's all CGI because they didn't want to deal with the retractable blades. They wanted it to ironically look as real as possible and to really get in there with the stabbing. So all of the stabbings in this entire movie is actually CGI later. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. To know. Oh, look at all that blood. That looks so cool on screen, I think. Mm -hmm. so this is why nobody wants anything, anything to do with Sydney. She's bringing the curse. Oh, you want to die? <laughs> Have your eyelids slid open? No, I'll pass on that, please. Whose death in the Scream series would you want to have? Whose death? Oh, boy. If you had to pick one. <laughs> Tatum's? She was pretty quick. No, she's got that whole thing. No, I'm talking about going up in the, the garage door. Um, I think I'd maybe pick Derek. He gets kind of shot in the in the heart, and he pretty much dies within a couple of seconds afterwards. I'm thinking of like least painful. Definitely not Drew's, and definitely not Olivia's. Huh. What a loser. I love that. What happened? Is there one of your first comment to me after you saw this? And that was? I bet you liked Trevor. <laughs> you were saying that? Yeah. And I don't really. That, that's very surprising. I, I'm pretty sure that I probably responded, I bet you liked Olivia. <laughs> and I did. I hate these people outside. I would have cut the scene too. You're just like your mother. <laughs> I don't really know if people would do that. 
I don't think people would line up outside just to hurl insults at her. Mm. Not, like, it just feels very... Maybe. There, there'd definitely be people out there, whether they're be hurling huge. insults. I don't think they'd be just yelling at her just the stuff, like... They don't want her around. Trying to get her I, running I, out of town. Maybe it's just bad acting. I don't know if it's what it is, but I just, I don't like that stuff outside with them. I don't think we need it. How's that? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely Robbie. Big camera hanging on your ear. I remember this was one of the scenes too that that was one of the first released. So one problem that I was actually talking with Zachary about this film is that um, I don't believe, I mean, we, we've gotten to know Gail through three movies. We, pr we, we know her personality. We know exactly kind of what she's going for and everything. Do you believe for a second that she would move back to Woodsboro? Not at all. <laughs> That's something that... I could see if she came back because she had heard about these murders mm -hmm. and Sydney was going to be there, maybe like a kind of reunion. But I don't believe for a second that she would, number one, move back to Woodsboro, and number two, take time off. You know, I feel like she'd be one of those people who they'd, they'd be constantly aware of pop culture and wanting to be on top of everything. And I don't know. I just, I feel like, you know, this movie gets a lot of, um, Scream 3 gets a lot of flack for, you know, being written by somebody else and that um, the, ca the characters, especially the new ones, aren't very well defined. It gets very goofy. But for whatever reason, I actually think that Aaron Kruger does a better job writing for these original characters in Scream 3 than Kevin Williamson does in this film. I feel like all three of the original characters are just kind of there. Nothing completely against Nev Campbell. I think she does what she can, but it really feels like she's kind of sleepwalking through this role. I got to agree with you there. I mean, it's very, very kind of a transparent um, role. I don't know if it was just the the writing or if something else was going on in her life or whatever, but yeah, it's just kind of a it, blah it role. It could be a character choice too of just the fact that, you know, she's gone through this three times before. She's written a book about it she's just physically exhausted with this all because she's getting older you know that i'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt but it doesn't read as interesting on mm -hmm. screen no nope, not at all and courtney's not given very many good one-liners uh david circle jerk yeah but it's nothing <laughs> like this stuff with her and parker in three which kevin didn't even write any of that and it's much better so this scene, originally, she goes to the parking garage. Uh, she gets stabbed. It happens really quick. And they add the stuff with her in the cop car later on. And I actually really like it. There's some controversy that she, you know, why would she get out of the cop car? It's kind of dumb. But I think it's funny. I don't, I don't know. It works, you know. So I'm actually, this is the one scene that I'm actually glad that they reshot. I do know my friend Andrew is not a fan of the reshot scene. So, hmm. yeah, I, I always enjoyed this this scene too. Her walking up to the car, mm -hmm. I always liked that a lot. Yeah, so they do a really good job with the editing. So she walks outside, she walks to the car, and she walks away, and then that's when she gets stabbed. So it's almost trying to figure out that. And there was something like eight months difference between the reshoots. And I guess it was, it was for those of you guys who live in the, the Midwest, I believe the reshoots were done in January. Cold. In Michigan. <laughs> um, wearing that, I can only imagine in a parking garage. I mean, even if it's a heated parking garage, that's got to be freezing. 
<laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to figure out, I think it's this part, and that she runs to the door, I believe, and then she gets stabbed. Do we know why Andrew did not like the additional? Uh, well, he said that it it didn't really make sense that she gets in the car. So this is the stuff right here that's added. So this was mm -hmm. reshot. So um, props to them for continuity. Um, if I wouldn't have known it, um, they did a really good job of matching it up. So he doesn't, he thinks it's very stupid of the, you know, she's in the car. Why doesn't she just leave? Mm -hmm. Like, um, so, I mean, I understand it. Like, like, why would she get out of the car? But I'm fine with all this. I think it adds a lot of tension. She can't get the car started. She's got to run. Well, the, save her life. The killer's right there. Yeah, well, she, she's trapped. So right now, would you get out? <laughs> I don't know this right is what this he, instance. This is what he didn't like. Well, she's checking. She's looking around. I have no problems with this. I I honestly think this stuff was needed. I think that if she had just got stabbed outside, I think it would have been way too quick. I think this really... So, mm -hmm. yeah, we have to try to figure out. So her walking away. See if we can spot the cut of when it goes back to the original footage. So, yeah, all of this stuff is from the reshoot. So, yeah, I had him in right there. Because she... Because that was because the car was going off before. Probably right, right, right here. Yeah. Do you notice anything continuity-wise? It's off. No, nope, nothing yet. Yeah, I mean, I complained about CGI before in Slashers, but for stuff like that, I think it's completely fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when it's like legitimate quality stuff, that's that's all right. Yeah, when you're adding to a scene instead of making the CGI the scene, I think that's really the key right there. Jaron Brody. Aaron. Adam. Adam Brody. <laughs> Who would you be, Anthony Anderson? <laughs> I remember this scene from the trailer. Oh. Oh, shit, she's dead. Hmm. Yeah, I remember going, I saw this down in, actually in Tempe, Arizona. Well, a lot of people laughed at that, right? I didn't even hear it. I was like, talking. move it, amateurs. <laughs> move it, amateurs. That lady laughed at that. I just remember her laughing at the, that one scene with the deputy. Um, but yeah, down in Tempe, and um, like I said, I went to see this a couple days after it had came out, and there were still a lot of people in the theater, and there was, you could tell that there was the hardcore fans, too. And not many of the teenagers were there. A lot of people, um, mm -hmm. probably later 20s, 30s, and a few people dressed up as well. Did you guys have any costume goers? Yeah, there were a the lot of people you that were dressed up. Uh, we went opening night at midnight. The first time I saw it, I actually saw it a total of six times. Um, yeah, there was it was a really packed crowd. Uh, the second time I watched it was a matinee that Saturday with my parents. Um, 
there was maybe about five other people there. Well, that's, a, that's a small showing. In the background, we have a cool poster. People under the stairs. We actually just did a commentary not too long ago on that film, so it's nice to have a little little connection here. Yeah, uh, I think People on the Stairs was the second, no, third commentary we did. The first one was Nightmare on Elm Street, the second one was Sleepaway Camp, and then we did People on the Stairs. So we've done a lot of Wes Craven. In fact, I think all of our commentaries that we've done have been Wes Craven except for Sleepaway Camp. So something they actually cheat, I don't know if you remember this, Steve, in the trailer, when Kirby holds up the phone, it's picture Ghostface. Do you remember that from the yeah, trailer? Yeah. Um, I don't know really why they did that. Um, maybe just the, the tension. Yeah, some, yeah you, if they showed this, I don't think you would have any idea what was going on. Having Ghostface on it just adds a little something to the trailer. So someone's trying to remake the first movie. Mm. So that is something that Scream, we've never gotten any nudity in there. Well, kind of the hazy, foggy shower in Scream 3 with Cotton's girlfriend, but besides that... Hmm. Did you ever have any... I know you didn't, but was there any kind of film clubs like this in high school or college? We never had anything like this. We had film like club. This. I was in film club. Nothing was, like this. Nothing probably as cool as this. It was pretty cool. It was like I, you and like the other kids who played magic, and you were just in like the cafeteria after school. No, it wasn't school. magic. No, it was film club, and there was probably like six or seven of us. Like, and why would, it, this seems like a very random group that's there. Like, why would Trevor be in Cinema Club? Like, it just, I don't know. Like, I know that they kind of want to bring all the kids together. And so what she's having right here. Chocolate milk? And string cheese. Uh, Wes is talking, it's like, oh, just, you know, go to the fridge. Like, grab something that you would eat as, like, a midnight snack. And. He's like, isn't that weird? <laughs> and he showed this to his daughter, and he's, she's like, that's exactly what I would take. Mm. And being a Wisconsin boy, uh, string cheese and chocolate milk sounds mm. great. That does sound good. I have no, no qualms with that. Dairy with dairy. In your fridge right now, what, what's the drink and the, the food you take? Currently in your fridge. Oh, I'd make myself a cheese quesadilla <laughs> with some Frank's. For a late night snack? Yeah, no, I'm actually probably going to have one when I get home tonight. Um, it's going to be a cheese quesadilla with Frank's Red Hot Sauce. Just pour it in there. And then I'm going to have that with my Minute Maid Sugar-Free Fruit Punch. Hmm. Does that sound good? Yeah. That sounds good. Not really a late night snack. Um, Do you want a cheese quesadilla with Frank's Red Hot Sauce? Yeah, I would love one. Do you have a quesadilla maker? Or you just oh yeah, you just put the um the craft singles in between. Now I use um, shredded cheese, bread, and then put it in the microwave, right? That's a, like a grilled <laughs> cheese sandwich. It's not even a cheese quesadilla. <laughs> well, don't okay. you? Well, you make like homemade mini pizzas with like a piece of bread, and then you use ketchup for the taco. <laughs> For the pizza sauce, and then put a slice of American cheese in there, right? No, I've used English muffins with pizza sauce, no, mozzarella, ketchup. and pepperoni. Would you try ketchup with a cheese single? Oh, no, okay. This is coming from the person who said they, they put tomato soup on their meatloaf. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Too many things wrong with that. So you wouldn't eat the ketchup with the... It might yeah. actually taste like... Cheeseburger without the burger. <laughs> Why would you eat that? Do you know what I mean, though? I do, bet it. Do you get like a cup of ketchup and just dip your crap, crap singles inside? No, but it's funny because last night before bed, I did have two slices of crap singles. Hmm. Just because I just couldn't find anything else that I wanted. So, what would you have for your midnight snack? In my fridge right now, um, drink would be pink lemonade. 
And the food. Zebra cakes. I don't have any zebra cakes in my refrigerator. I'd go up to the freezer and I'd grab a ice cream sandwich. What kind of ice cream sandwich? Just your regular. Not like the skinny cow ones? <laughs> it's probably roundies. I'm not sure. I haven't even looked it's at the box. not even Kemp's? It could be. I would never looked at the box. Kemp's is the best. The only thing that bugs me with the ice cream sandwiches, though, is when you get on your fingers. The sticky brown stuff? Yeah. Well, you have never had a problem with sticky brown stuff. Do you like to lick the white stuff out of the middle? <laughs> No, off the corners. Do you like it when it's a little... Soft. When it starts, yeah, yeah, I don't like it right away when it's, like, really hard. Yeah, you gotta let it sit for a little bit. Let it warm up. Like the softies better than the hardies? Yep. We need to start something like this. Get a Where big screen, have this? big projector. Don't your parents have a barn? No, but actually... Um, my friend Justin was talking about that he was going to do a screening of the Friday the 13th movies on VHS on the side of his parents' house. That'd be cool. The projector. I would love to be a part of that. <laughs> I have that Sap shirt. You've never worn it. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. I've worn it's it. It's too hard. I've washed it a few times. I only like the softies. I bought you a uh, red Abercrombie shirt like a year ago, and you've never worn it. Well, it's still sitting there. Why don't want you wear it? <laughs> You're wearing it next week for the commentary. I'm taking it back. So I, I like this barn stuff with her. Um, I wish that it added up to a little bit more, though. Um, I remember, like, a lot of people were talking about this scene where I actually have two friends of mine that were, um, that saw an advanced critic screening of this maybe a month before it came out where we want to talk about review embargoes, uh, they had to sign a non-disclosure form where when I was talking to her online, she couldn't even say if she liked it or not. She couldn't say anything about it until I believe it was two days before release date. Hmm. I feel like those cameras are way too big to just be hanging out. Don't you think she has some smaller ones? Someone put a drink in front of them. <laughs> Someone's covering all of them. Uh-oh. She's got some good good technology here. Everything's syncing up to her. How did she get all this? She's not a reporter anymore. She's with the spy shop. <laughs> That'd be expensive. She's got a lot of money. From what? She hasn't been working. She's... I don't think Dewey gets that much. <laughs> Dewey doesn't have anything. Maybe she did some, maybe, some sex tapes. Her some head. money on that. Jennifer Aniston's body. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you left at that. No, because I said <laughs> I said better years before this movie came out. Uh, but. Yeah, like, this is, like, another thing. Like, I feel like she she would want to be so in with the trends. Like, I could see, like, I wanted more of a Gail Weathers character of her still trying to be hip. Like, I would imagine, like, there's so much stuff that they could do today. Like, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen, like, her, like, in the car, like, her on Twitter, like, her having her own fan page and people knowing her from that. And, like, I feel like with the advent of the internet and how much it's come with the last 11 years that this movie kind of just barely touches on that. And there's so much more just with, especially teens of how much their lives are surrounded by social media and how much they'd be using this. Like, like these, these kids are all here at this party. How many of them would be 
making videos of this and doing vines and putting <laughs> stuff on Instagram. Like this is stuff that I feel like really if they wanted to kind of address this new generation of horror fans, that that's something that they should have probably touched a little bit more on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, we, we've all been to, whether it's movies or conventions, um, film festivals, anything like that. I mean, people are constantly going on, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and just posting, 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 and it, it never stops. So it's, it'd be only... Only human nature for these kids to be doing the same. Right. So, yeah, I believe in the year before this movie came out, um, Courtney and David are the first ones to sign on. I believe Nev signed on after that. And then there was a long wait with Wes Craven. I don't know it was if it was him working with Dimension and him having a lot of problems on Cursed, which would be a very interesting commentary for us to do that in the future. Um, if that was the case or what it was, or maybe he was just done with the franchise. Um... Yeah, he was the last one to sign on, but as soon as he signed on, it was like bam, bam, bam. Like, it was, you know, they really didn't have any, there wasn't a, you know, pushed back release date. It was just kind of, you know, there was reshoots, but nothing overly major. Hmm. Got some thunder going on outside know, here. Got a little, little storm of brewing outside. Kind of a little a nice, rumble. I thought it was your tummy. <laughs> nice backdrop. Wanting that ice cream sandwich. Yeah, I know. I keep thinking about that. I actually might might have some uh, string cheese in the fridge. So I might have to start munching on that after the movie. I have some low-fat shredded mozzarella cheese. <laughs> and some low-carb wraps. That's what I'm going to use to make my quesadilla. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of calories. No, it's only 180 <laughs> per quesadilla. And that includes the cheese and the hot sauce. <laughs> and my sugar-free fruit punch only has 15 <laughs> calories. I do love some good Frank's Red Hot, though. So good. I go through about a bottle a week. Probably an exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can ask my roommate. I go through about a bottle a week. I, I, I just, I don't know why. What I are just, you putting that much on? My quesadillas. Like I like do you have I, a day? Usually two or three. Oh, That's all I've been eating is the low fat quesadillas. So I'm gonna die right now. Huh. I had pizza hut today. What kind of pizza? Meat lovers? It was. I had a slice of pepperoni. Pan style? That was pan and I had thin and crispy for the first time in years and it was I loved it. That's my favorite. It's actually so good. good. Um the thin and crust crispy with pineapple. Mm, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I like thin crust because you get to eat more. Well, and it's not as like greasy. Like when I eat like the pan, like it's really good, but like you can just feel it in your gut. Mm -hmm. Like you can just wring out that grease. Yeah. I remember you said you used to take the pepperonis where the grease is just sitting in there, and you just pour, pour it in your in mouth. mouth. Yeah, there's a top. I like them when they're kind of, when they're a little um, crunchy on the sides. Mm -hmm. Pepperoni and pineapple, though. Perfect pizza. I like pineapple and Canadian bacon. No, I don't like that as much. I found that Canadian bacon's a little, um, a little chancy sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, Mr. Brody taking his lap around the house. He's pretty much wasting this movie. I don't. I really don't know why he's here. So he'd probably be like, "It's dumb wind chimes." Hmm. We had this big debate after we watched this of the. So she goes. So she puts him down, and then when she goes back out there, they're back up again. I believe. 
it's been a while since I've seen this. There's there's something with the wind chimes where we debated whether or not it was a goof. Your take on it? I gotta watch it again to remember exactly what happened. But I mean, some time passes, so she she might have went out there and put him back up. I don't think she would have, but it's it's possible. I remember this scene being in the trailer, and they pretty much give away that Anna Brody dies. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I a good dad. That's terrible. Oh, Anthony Anderson. <laughs> I like how the blood looks, but mm-hmm. oh, God, his... So did, did his fuck Bruce Willis line get a lot of laughs in your theater? Um... I, would, I can remember it, to be honest with you. I would assume it did, though. We got groans in our theater at this scene. This is like the one scene that people did not like. It's just awful acting. I don't know if it's supposed to be like this. He's supposed to, well, I guess he's, he thinks he's a comedian. He thinks he's funny, so I'm guessing he's You think he's funny? Play up on that. Never have. Didn't you really like him in Kangaroo Jack? Was it Jerry O'Connell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one of your favorite movies? You know what? I have not seen that forever. I can't even hardly remember what it's about. Christopher Walken's in it too, isn't he? Really? So do you have a lot of wind chimes? Um, zero. It's something, it's kind of like a go-to so, gift for my mom do, back in the day, though. Do you do that? Putting a paper bag in a plastic one? I've never once done that in my entire life. Why would they do that? Maybe to reinforce it if there's something heavy in there? I've, I've never noticed that before. I've never seen that, like, in real life. Sometimes they don't have, like, the the go-to movie cliche of having, like, French bread sticking out and, <laughs> yeah. and like, vegetables. Yeah, like the, the green stuff on a carrot. Yep. It's, it's always in the bag. Like, you always see, like, the, the, the green ends for the carrot, and then you see, like, a big loaf of French <laughs> bread. French bread sounds good. I like to make pizza subs with French bread. <laughs> There's another one where, oh, it just happens to be the right mm-hmm. channel with the right news. Going into this, how much of the story did you know, if any? I went in pretty pretty fresh. Um, I tried to go in pretty fresh. Um, there was stuff like here and there that like some of it was right, some of it was wrong. Some of it was wrong because of rewrites, like the stuff with um, uh, we talked about another commentary about that Sydney comes back because her father had died. That's really big in messages. <laughs> Maybe she has bad eyesight. The mom. The mom. Looks kind of like an alien. She's from Dance of the Wolves. Hmm. She was also in um, Donnie Darko. So yeah, the wind chimes are back up. That's what it was. The mom... The brings, mom put them up. No, because the mom was holding them and brings them in. And she goes back outside. Well, yeah, I think we can all agree that they, they had an idea. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if we had some wind chimes and Ghostface was... I like that being stabbed to the mail slot. I don't know if that exactly work because I don't know there's not a lot of room there with the flap up <laughs> do you like it when the flap's up I was just going to ask you <laughs> if you have problems making enough room with the flap <laughs> do you have problems getting the flap open <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any flap problems plenty of room because it's not very big <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no problem sticking in there. Uh oh. Way too many red herrings in this. Um. take you a while to kind of figure out what was going on as far as the villain um no it was given away for me at least one of them the yeah. major one i didn't talk to my friend for an entire week after he revealed to me that jill was one of the killers because i was so mad that he might be right and he was Kind of good right there. Pouring in blood. <laughs> yeah. Tubes in her nose. <laughs> So I, okay, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to say something very controversial. There's going to be a lot of people that are not going to like this. And that's, I don't think Kirby as a character is all that great. Take I, it back. I think Hayden is very good in the performance. I think she adds more to this character that's really there but I honestly don't think the character of Kirby I mean obviously she's supposed to be a female Randy um I don't think she really adds that much I mean you know I know that fans really like her she's one of kind of the beloved characters of the series especially in this one she's probably most fans favorite um and she's fine she's all good she is fine she's, she's funny uh, but i don't think she's all that wonderful she just doesn't do anything for you i i personally like rebecca a lot more than i like kirby hmm Maybe it is just the fact that, well, part of it is the fact that um, I just, I don't believe Hayden as this hardcore horror nerd fan. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, she's just too, you know, not not it. to be a cliche, <laughs> but um, she's too pretty. <laughs> like, I just, you know, there's just something about her that I just don't feel it fully works. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I can definitely under, understand where you're coming from. I mean, there's, I guess, you kind of have a stereotype of what you think this, this horror fan would look like or be like or act like. And she is she is very pretty. And, yeah, would she be hanging out with these, these guys, these, these other students at Woodsboro? Probably not. Everyone's going to stay up. <laughs> do you ever do a dramatic U-turn like that? No, I, I would love to. One thing that I, I am kind of sad about is that um, I wish for this kind of like little house party um, that we kind of would have seen other clips from the Stab movies. Um, instead of, I mean, it, it's fun, the clips that we've seen, but it would have been interesting at the very least. I mean, granted, there's probably nothing ever shot, but I would have loved to have seen something with Parker Posey as Gale. <laughs> uh, just, I think that would have been a lot of fun. Uh, the other problem that I kind of have with this is that where are all the adults? On vacation. <laughs> 
So even if this is me drawing. No, you're you get way worse than this. Streaming. Maybe this is you. Streaming. Streaming. I think you make it look like a girl. <laughs> See, now him, I believe, is a geek. Have you ever seen one of those headsets before? No, I haven't. Me either. I don't know if that's something that really exists, or... Yeah, I guess it's got to, but... That got a big jump in our theater. Yeah, that did? Yeah. Did you get scared? You no, like I didn't jump at all. popcorn and dropped your um, junior mints. No, I did not. I don't. I don't normally eat at the theater. I love to eat. What's gonna be the next big movie that you go see? Hmm. No, I'm just. Godzilla? <laughs> I'm probably not going to see Godzilla. I've I'm never really seen excited any to see Godzilla. I haven't seen any of them either, <laughs> but I'm really excited to see this one. Oh, how come? Elizabeth Olsen. <laughs> I love Elizabeth right. Olsen. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love Elizabeth Olsen? <laughs> Everybody does. I loved her in Martha, Marcy, Me, Marlene. I loved her in Silent House, Liberal Arts, Red Lights. And why would she be interested in him? See, if he, if she was a little bit geekier, I would believe that she'd be what wanted to get with Rory Culkin, <laughs> but she's... I believe her way more with Trevor. <laughs> Is that what you're like? Yeah. Trevor or... Trevor. You'd be storming off. No, you'd be storming off pouting. <laughs> you'd be pouting that somebody else is talking to Hayden. <laughs> I didn't even like that in the theater, just seeing that. I, I wanted that to be me. So this would you be Robbie then? <laughs> oh, I don't know. She's starting to walk a little bit more like you when you're drunk. The camera backwards. <laughs> Could be me. And he dies. So who did you think was the original killer? Um, I don't know. I don't think I had quite an idea. I was just kind of taking it all in and just trying to enjoy the, enjoy the scream in, in theater. So your favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I bet that got a lot of laughs in <laughs> theater. Yeah. See, I wish... I'm, I'm gay, if that <laughs> helps. I wish they would have did a little more with that. I wish he would have left the camera on backwards and then maybe he's running away and we, we see Ghostface behind him chasing him or something. I think they could have done something cool like that. A cool chase scene. Oh, hmm. poor Robbie. I wanted to get lucky tonight. Hmm. 
That was a good kick. That was a good kick. I don't know if he'd go down seven stairs, but... Slides around into that bed pretty swiftly. Hmm. Smooth floor. Would you be scared? Oh, yeah. I don't even like being on roofs in the daytime with no ghost face. You don't go on the roof? <laughs> Grab a couple of beers in your <laughs> lawn chair? I would if I could hang out with the guys from Workaholics, though. My first apartment, me and my friends used to do that. Did you put a couch like outside on the porch and just watch the traffic go by? No. Just bring a couple lawn chairs in our apartment complex. Outside in the parking lot? Watch the skateboarders go by? No. <laughs> We'd go up on the roof. They wouldn't let you do that in an apartment. Yes, where where we were at, there were stair there were like Fire safe scares stairs that went up to the rough. We weren't supposed to go up there, but we did. The landline said someone smashed the router. <laughs> Does that make any sense to you? What's the router have to do with the landline? I, they have that, what's that like? Some Jack. There's a brand. Uh... But then I don't te technically think it'd be Landline. <laughs> that Magic Jack? Magic Jack. That's it. They smashed the router. I checked the Magic Jack. Who uses that crap? International calls. It's supposed to be a good deal. Yeah, it's for bad or social. But what I don't get is like... If you can afford to have internet, you could probably afford to have a cell phone or like, why would you need a landline on top of that? It's funny, even watching this and just seeing, because they've had a couple, um, I guess, house phones, home phones um, in the movie so far. And even that looks just weird. Like, gosh, I haven't used one of those in forever. Do you even know how? No. <laughs> what about using a rotary phone? <laughs> used to have one of those back in the day. Take forever as you're like doing the numbers. Yeah, nines were the worst. Like, <laughs> Harkens back to the original right here. It's not. A, it's all her mother's fault. If her mother hadn't been a whore, <laughs> dozens and dozens of people would not have died. Whores aren't all that bad. Sydney's mom had sex with a lot of people. And because of all those people are also the reason that a lot of these people died, <laughs> including Sydney's mom. This is always a cool scene, too. No, I like this scene. It really, you know, like you said, brings back to the original scene with uh, Drew Barrymore. Piranha. Let's chance it on Piranha, <laughs> which just also happens to be a Dimension film. Yeah. Piranha. I want to know what the question was. She didn't let him finish. It's 
So I always wonder in these movies, like, what would they have done if the person would have gotten all the questions right? Mm. They just keep asking until they get it wrong. So the big controversy here is you find out that Charlie is one of the killers and he stabs Kirby. Is Kirby really bad? What do you think? Well, I gotta hope for no. I mean, they don't mention... I think they kind of leave it open. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't mention her at all in the hospital scene. And I know that, um, you know, they, they kind of tease it a little bit in the, the filmmaker's commentary that, you know, maybe she is alive and maybe she will be part of Screen 5 if Screen 5 were to ever happen. Maybe. And do you know if there is maybe more footage of her where there's more of a clear-cut answer or they I left it open? I don't think so. There could be, but... None that's actually been released. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, that'd be something interesting to know. Maybe um, there's more footage and you know she dies. And then during, you know, test screenings, people are like, no, Kirby was very likable. We liked her boobs. We want to see more. And then so they left her in. I don't know who said that. <laughs> I'm sure people said that. What if people were like, I want more Rory Culkin? <laughs> Did you say that? No. Ooh. This is where you get the other killer. So here, like before the reveal, did you figure out it was Joe? Um, I don't. I don't think I did. Is there a big in the theater? No. Just like her dad. Hmm. She could be shot anywhere. Where would it be? Probably in the head if I'm going to die right away. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, am I going to die from the shot wound? Depends where you're getting shot. Maybe the foot? Probably not going to die. The crotch? The butt? Cheek or hole? Cheek. <laughs> where do you want to get shot? <laughs> Here's where you deserve to get shot. Right in the wiener. <laughs> oh, that's just mean. That's cruel. What kind of, did that get a big reaction at your theater? Yeah. Got it. Ooh. Yeah. And that was one of oh. Did you cross your legs? About to right now. <laughs> so sexy. Hmm. Yeah, Charlie can die right away, but um, I actually think that Emma is really good as Jill. She plays a good crazy girl. She does. I think the crazy girls are kind of sexy. Hmm. Yeah. So before when we had talked about more, a bit at least, I wanted more of kind of the social media, kind of the internet, that kind of um, aspect of this film. I think this this final act is a really good job of establishing, you know, the you know the the fame and whatever it takes to get it, and that you know she says it best herself that you know. You don't really have to achieve anything for this generation. All you have to do is have fucked up shit happen to you. And I think that's really true. And I guess, you know, although I really like Scream 4 and I think it's a fun movie, especially this final act, 
Um, I really wanted kind of more of that throughout the entire film because I really do believe that this stuff is the strongest. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to do any of this? Have somebody stab you? Probably you not. Remember, they did, there's a, a robbery at a gas station not too far away. And um, they, they did this kind of same thing. Somebody came in and, pre, and held up the place. The, uh, the person working behind the register pretended it was uh, – they didn't know the person. He ended up getting stabbed, and he ended up having to go to the hospital. And then, I don't know, he might have ended up telling on whoever the person was. But they were actually together on it, and they both got busted. That's crazy. Is having a shell? <laughs> it might have been a shell. <laughs> Maybe in a mobile? I think I might know the gas stations might have happened on. <laughs> if anyone's in Appleton, I think there's one on, on Prospect that's a little sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> that one's scary. Yeah, it's really funny. There's a really nice one right across the street from a really, really, <laughs> really creepy one. And I'm always like, why do people go to the other one? Yo, Jill's looking actually really good right now. I think she gets better as the movie goes on. Better than Hated? No, but you just like, still looking good. You're just like crazy chicks. <laughs> Would you let her stab you? Mm-mm. No, sir. Did you let Rory Culkin stab you? <laughs> no, he, I'll, let, I'll let him stab you. You guys can go do that together. So this was the part right here, um, her kind of um, self-mutilation that... There, there's something about this that's, I mean... More than anything else that she does, you know, and she kills a lot of people and goes really crazy. There's something about seeing someone do this to themselves that I I honestly think this might be the most disturbing stuff in the entire franchise. I still remember like just sitting in the theater, just being like, what the fuck is going on? And just, I mean... It kind of starts out a little bit weird with the, the scratches mm -hmm. in the face and the pulling of the hair. But by the time that she stabs her own self and then breaks, she just purposely falls through the glass coffee table. I mean, it's That got just, a lot of laughs. That got laughs? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that vividly. People were laughing at all this stuff. What about this? probably that one lady the most. Like when she stabs herself? Ugh. Ow. The one thing I love is when she kicks the stand to the fuck. Like, that's very believable. Um, I, I think that might have gotten laughed at our theater, but our theater, I think, took this stuff very seriously. What of this stuff could you do yourself? <laughs> um, so far, it would be the frame. Ugh. What about using somebody else's hand to pull out your hair? No. Scratches on the face? Oh, that'd be not at all. What about the coffee table? Let's watch. Hmm. Just give me more of a backache than anything. I think Zachary Allen can pull off those heels. It's possible. <laughs> so originally there's some controversy that um, some people believe that the hospital scene was never in the final, the original draft, that that was an added scene by Weinstein because they wanted some closure and to show that Nev Campbell was not dead. Um, I personally think it might have been interesting if it would have ended with her laying next to her and mm -hmm. you think that you know or I, I think actually that they had originally talked that this happens and then you know you see that jill's alive and she gets pulled in the stretcher into the ambulance and that's originally where it was going to end but 
you know, it, it kind of would have been interesting if it would have ended there. And then if they were going to do a five, they could have still done the hospital. And that could have been the intro. Mm -hmm. and that, that would have been a yeah. really cool intro. You think the hospital stuff seems a little tacked on? Um, no. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't mind it. I actually kind of like it. And I do oh. Yep. Um, I do like the fact that she references the fact, you know, she says, you know, this was all supposed to end at the party. This is just getting a little silly now. So, I mean, whenever they're kind of, you know, poking fun at themselves and I don't know, I think the stuff at the hospital's kind of fun. Um, would it have been better if it would have ended with her being, you know, put in the ambulance? Possibly. But I it's not that I don't like this stuff. So what about you? Um, yeah, I, I think I would have enjoyed it just to end with her going into the ambulance a little bit of what the hell just happened and what's going to happen. And then, as you said, I mean, that would have been a really cool beginning to, to a Scream 5, get right, right, right into some action. Um, having her die right away at the beginning of the movie would be, would be uh, maybe kind of unexpected and something kind of cool. Oh, I do think that, um, you know, but if, if you were going to do another one too, I mean, and she, you know, Nev Campbell wasn't dead, you know, how would you even keep that secret? <laughs> you know, it'd be very hard of, you know, well, I think you, yeah, I think more than anything, you just have to make it, make it known that, you know, Sydney's back. I don't think right. you could keep it. But then secret. wouldn't they say that the ending for this one was a ch cheat then? I mean, I think that with it either way, I think that they were kind of they were kind of painting themselves in a corner of the, you know, where do you go from here? Um, I do like seeing her go a little crazy. And I if the hospital scene gives anything, I think it gives two really, really, really good lines, and that's um Jill line of the, you know, who do you think you are, Michael fucking Myers? And also, I love Sydney's final line of the, you know, you forgot the first roller remakes. Don't fuck with the original, and we would have, we would have been missing that. Mm -hmm. And you get to see Courtney back. <laughs> She's back, back again. You find out that you know she wasn't stable, can no serious condition, and so everything's gonna be okay for her. I like her bloody eye too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I like the uh, I guess the lighting and cinematography and in this um, hospital stuff though it does give a very cold and kind of harsh mm -hmm. harsh um, feel to it. Jill's just such a little bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm curious where what her thought process in all this was. Like, how is she gonna get get this all squared away and tied up in a bow? I think that she's just, like, I think that she had everything planned, and I think that this just kind of got out of control for her. Mm -hmm. Do you want to die with a bedpan? <laughs> Gonna hit in the head. At least it's not like used.
yeah, I mean, who would she blame for all of this? And how, I mean, mm-hmm. it does ask a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, I think, it, yeah, like you're kind of saying, it's to the point where she is just beyond crazy and she's just going balls to the wall. Deputy Judy, Judy mm-hmm. saves the day. <laughs> think she was there. <laughs> yeah, she definitely did a great performance here at the end. Oh, yeah, I think she's terrific. How hard do you think it was to get all these, um, I guess... Not really all of them anymore, but I mean, these kind of main Courtney, David, Nev back for for Scream Five. Do you think? Did Did you hear anything about the casting at all, as far as getting these these main for Scream Four? Yeah. You mean? Oh, you said Scream Five. Oh. Um, for Scream Four, um, Nev was definitely the hardest of the original cast. You know, I think David and Courtney. I mean, at least in the early stages you know they were still you know on really good terms they were still married you know they were just excited to you know work together (laughs) on a project i don't know if they were going to do another one if they would come back it might even come back to the point of the you know i wouldn't be surprised if they did another one if maybe dewey died in the opening scene and then maybe there was gail for the rest because i feel like out of the two characters gail is definitely more beloved and that way they could get them both and they wouldn't have to work together. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it could be anything. But for this one, I definitely think of the major cast, you know, it didn't seem like it was that hard of work. It's kind of hard looking back on it. But I think that definitely West was kind of the last one that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still awesome. And that, that says a lot for. You know, I mean, the franchise itself and the people, all these people behind the scenes, too, that um, they're able to get these these bigger stars to come back mm-hmm. again and again and again. I mean, that says a lot about the, the whole production of it as a whole. Yeah, and I mean, even in the 80s, you really never had this with horror movies. You know, you'd have uh, Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, and maybe you'd have one cast member come back for, you know, one of the sequels. Um, usually to be killed off right away or just to kind of close the story arc. But you never had all of the returning cast members come back for all of the Mm -hmm. movies. And this this movie really kind of changed horror in a bit for that. I mean, it it almost, you know, we can almost even look at like the, the Saw movies that kind of, you know, started with that too. But yeah, I mean... So that's Scream 4. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's really, it's really well made. I do have some problems here and there with it. Uh, I, I wish that it had been a bigger uh, box office success. I do love these end credits. I think these are a mm-hmm. lot of fun. Um, Aaron Kruger does not get a writing credit, but he does get an executive producer credit. Interesting enough. Uh, so yeah, that's Scream Four. Yeah, it was a it was a box office disappointment. I don't think it became this big hit that everyone was talking about. You know, I think that it either came out too late or it came out too soon. You know, if it had come out five years after Scream Three, it probably would have done a lot better. And it also, if it would have came out maybe twenty years after the original, they could have maybe tied on on the nostalgia there, but. It was just kind of in that in-between stage, and it just, for whatever reason, it just didn't click with new audiences. Courtney Cox, not going by Courtney Cox or Cat in the credits, but it's it's too bad because although this is a flawed movie, I do think that it is um, a worthy slasher, and it's a slasher that we 
don't get, especially on the big screen, very much today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's just one of those Mary one McDonald. Of those movies where it's just it is what it is. So, but um, I I had a good time with it. Do you Kevin. still like four better than three? Um, I mean, they're they're so different. It's that those are those are two of them which are kind of like I don't know, I don't know. Like I have I have a lot of fun with this one now, and I, even and watching it again, which I haven't watched in a while, like. I feel like I had a lot more fun. I kind of want to watch it over. Um, but, um, I mean, no, I don't know. Overall, I mean, it was a good film to, to kind of watch again, kind of spruce up on, remember some of the old, um, you know, kind of funny things and the scary things and all the all the blood in the in a couple scenes, which is, which is always fun, too. Yeah, so that's our commentary for Scream 4. We'll be back next week. Not sure yet on what title we're going to be reviewing next week. If you guys have any recommendations or choices of movies that you'd like us to tackle, let us know. We are always up for suggestions, and we hope that you've enjoyed kind of our Scream marathon. Yeah, until next time, folks, have a horror-filled week.